Hello everyone, Dr. Mike here, TCOM 101. In the last video I tried to talk about this theory called authoritarianism. It's a form of government or a philosophy, okay, in which there's a strong central power, usually a strong leader, and limited political freedoms. Individual freedoms are subordinate to the state. And in an authoritarian society, there's no real constitutional accountability. And authoritarian leaders came up with some pretty powerful ways to control the media and the flow of information. Now, I think there's something inherent in humans, okay, something that yearns to be free, the free spirit of humankind. And this free spirit has led people to chip away at the doctrines of authoritarianism and to try and create a different form of government and a different philosophy. Now, this has happened many times in world history where people have risen up to challenge authority. Our country, the United States, is based upon a revolution against authority. We can see this happening during the French Revolution, where people rose up against people in power. Now, the French Revolution had a bloody side to it, yes indeed, but still, the people rose. This happened in mid-20th century America, probably the greatest threat to the world were the authoritarian leaders, Hitler and Mussolini. And the whole world had to stand up to fight for freedom against these authoritarian leaders. During the 1980s, we saw the fall of the Berlin Wall. Here somebody is literally chipping against authoritarianism. Another example of people rising up against authority, South Africa, where people finally were able to end a repressive apartheid policy. Also during the 1980s, we saw people in China rise up, a Tiananmen Square protest and massacre. Here's a famous person called a uh, picture, Tank Man, where this one individual is certainly standing up to authority. In the Middle East, we've seen a number of attempts to topple the dictators. For example, Iran, and we went in there and helped them, of course, uh, and our activity led to the fall of Saddam Hussein. In the last decade, there have been all kinds of uprisings in the Middle East where people have demanded more freedom more liberty, more democracy. And right now we're seeing huge protests in Hong Kong as the young people, especially in China, rise up to demand more liberty and less authority. Now here's an interesting thesis I want to share with you. We've got this explosion of new technology and I think that it's going to make it nearly impossible for authoritarian leaders to completely restrict the free flow of information when we've got the internet, the dark web, um, proxy servers, all kinds of ways to use the internet to share information. I think that ultimately the technology that in some ways enslaves us can also potentially free all of us. Now here in the United States, we operate under a different political philosophy, a philosophy known as libertarianism. And its key word here is liberty. It's an ideology that embraces individual liberty over state or governmental authority, both in the realm of economic activity and in personal and social activity. Lots of freedom, minimal authority. And this is kind of the notion upon which our country is based. The individual is very significant and capable of self-governing. 
So a libertarian society depends upon a free, open, pluralistic, mass communication system. You can't have one without the other. You can't have a free libertarian society without a free and open press and media system. Let's give you some historical background. All the ideas about liberty and libertarianism really come from the Age of Enlightenment. This was a period during the 18th century where new currents of thought were wearing down, chipping away at institutionalized traditions. New ideas, new approaches to old institutions were setting the stage for great revolutions to come. Let me talk about a few of these libertarian philosophers, because it's very important to know these folks and their contributions to our culture and our history. One of the best libertarian philosophers was a man named Immanuel Kant, who was really a, an ethicist and a theorist. But he wrote a book called The Critique of Pure Reason back in 1781. Here's my favorite quote from that book. He was admonishing, Kant was admonishing the readers to start using their brains. He wrote, dare to know, have the courage to use your intelligence, think on your own, and occasionally stand up to authority. Kant had great faith in the average human being. Another great libertarian philosopher and thinker was John Milton, the famous poet, John Milton. He was one of the first to argue against censorship. The 17th century philosopher John Milton, he wrote a little pamphlet called the Areopagitica, in which he laid out a very strong case against censorship. We know this today as the kind of the Miltonian ideal, the idea of a free and open marketplace of ideas. That's how you get to the truth through a free and open encounter of all the ideas. Milton said, let truth and falsehood grapple. Whoever knew truth put to the worse in a free and open encounter. Milton said, put all the ideas out there, good, bad, ugly, noble, sleazy, put them all out there because over time, the best ideas would rise to the top and the truth would emerge. This is known as the marketplace of ideas concept. This is one of the reasons we have a First Amendment to protect the marketplace of ideas. So this is a situation or place in which all sorts of values and opinions and ideas are put forward and they uh, compete. There's debate and eventually some of the ideas are recognized as being truthful. We also call this the battle of ideas concept. This is how we find truth in a libertarian society from the bottom up through the competition of ideas. So Milton's major argument in the Areopagitica, today we call it the self-writing principle, the idea that eventually what's right will emerge, the truth will emerge. Now, this doesn't happen overnight. It can take a long time sometimes for the truth to emerge. But Milton believed if truth and falsehood were debated, truth would always triumph over falsehood and there'd be this self-correcting process. And again, this is um, what our First Amendment is based upon, this marketplace of ideas concept and protecting it. Okay, I hope you're hanging in there. I just want to talk about a couple of more of these um, libertarian philosophers. John Locke. Another famous figure from the Enlightenment, he wrote a bunch about a government okay, and the relationship between individuals and the state. Well, from all of his writings, some major concepts emerge that are very important here. First, that humankind is essentially just and rational. People are capable of discerning the truth and self-governance, and they don't need a bunch of heavy-handed paternalism or authoritarian guidance. Locke also argued that freedom of expression is a basic fundamental human right, and that many other rights depend upon our right to express ourselves and to complain. 
Locke also wrote the government exists only at the pleasure of the people, and if the people are no longer served by the government, the people have a right to reject and overthrow that government. And of course, that was the notion upon which our country is based, that a government exists only at the pleasure of the people. Another very important libertarian philosopher was the famous Adam Smith. Adam Smith is known as the father of modern day capitalism, and he wrote a very important book called The Wealth of Nations back in 1776. He believed that government should be kept to a minimum, really allow the free marketplace to guide the economic structure, small government, okay, and a lot of marketplace forces at work. That's what Smith believed in. Okay, another great libertarian thinker was Thomas Jefferson, one of our founding fathers, who of course wrote the Declaration of Independence. Jefferson offered several important concepts. He believed a free press was absolutely necessary for the enlightenment of citizens in a democracy. A free press was necessary for people to get the information and enlightenment that they need to be an effective political participant. Also, Jefferson believed the press must serve as a check on the activities of public officialdom. We've already talked about this. This is known as the watchdog function of the media to serve as a check on power, whether it's public or private. Uh, the press must serve as a check on power. Now, President Trump has repeatedly disparaged the press, rejecting the news media's role in holding the government to account for their words and actions. You've heard it, fake news, the media is the enemy of the people. Okay? These are attempts to um, delegitimize the media as an institution. Now, what are some of the basic characteristics of libertarianism as a philosophy? Well, first, the world's governed by truth. There's a truth out there that we can get to through the marketplace of ideas. The individual is guided by reason. Most people are intelligent and rational and capable of self-governance. They don't need heavy-handed paternalism or authority. Another characteristic of libertarianism is that a free marketplace of ideas is absolutely essential. We must have it. Every individual citizen has certain human rights, including freedom of expression. Government exists only to serve the interests of the individual, and that the media should be a private, free, competitive enterprise. These are some of the characteristics of libertarianism. Now all of this culminated in our country in 1791 with the creation of the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to our Constitution. The Bill of Rights, very important, 45 words, five freedoms, and I expect you to know the five freedoms guaranteed under the First Amendment, these libertarian freedoms. So here's the 45 words. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So these are the five basic freedoms guaranteed under the First Amendment. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, the right to peaceably assemble, and the right to petition, to ask the government to look into a situation and to correct that situation. So there's a little introduction to the political philosophy known as libertarianism. This is the philosophy upon which our country, the United States of America, is based. All right, that's all I've got for this lecture. I'll see you again soon. Please continue to take care of yourselves and each other during the great pandemic. So long.